Once a band of wrestlers stole a herd of cattle. Cattle? But what they didn't know was that that herd was Bill. And when he caught them ornery villains, Pecos knocked out all their fillings. That's the reason that they're called in the Hills. Oh, you mean, oh, hey, 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 oh, hello. For the toughest critter went to the hollow bone. If he, I, hey, I, hey, if he, oh. For the toughest critter went to the hollow bone. Once while reclining on a cloud, high over Texas, with his guns, he made the stars evaporate. And when he saw them, he started to climb and take a left one, right behind him. That's the reason, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the, uh, as the emblem of the Lone Star, Texas State, the Yippee-I-Yay, yippee i ho the toughest critter, what's the hell of ho? Yippee-I-Yay, yippee i ho the toughest critter, what's the hell of ho? Yippee-I-Yay, yippee i ho the toughest critter, of the hour. Thank you. Yes. Well, are you enjoying yourself today? Well, I have a microphone here for guests. If there's anybody that would like to say hello, I don't like to hook people into stuff that like they're a little bit too excited about. We always enjoy having all kinds of special people come by to say hello. And youngsters learning about history of a great, great innovator. And a lot of people might not realize that Walt Disney was good old fashioned, but he, even from the very beginning, was heavy into technology and breaking, breaking barriers. Right. All through his life, even, even at the end with the audio animatronics, and there, there's one of the greatest audio animatronic people. Are you, are you done for the day? You want to say hello? Come on over. You can say hello. You can say hello. Sing a song. You want to sing a song? Got some very very special friends. Thanks. Tell everybody what you're up to. All right. That's okay. All right. Now, this is your microphone. Uh, Afro? You want a question? All right. Joe Collins, the first time. I'll ask you a question. What was Joe Namath's greatest season with the New York Jets? I don't know, but I was on TV. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. 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 Well, that's a real, a real, uh, what do you call it, a real ladies man. Is it, that true? Was he a real looker? Uh, Joe the lady sitting next to him, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say maybe, maybe his popularity is good to be next to what, what is Joe what, what does Joe Namath have to do with you? Well, it's funny. See, his, Joe Namath's name starts with the letter N, and my last name starts with M, right next to each other in the alphabet. What is this show about? I, I thought this was Walt Disney's barn. It is Walt it is Walt Disney's barn. Well then what are you doing here if you're with your name? It? Because yes, it's because because it's Walt Disney's barn, but it's Hobo Hank's yard. So Who? I tell yard. Hello, I'm Hobo Hank. Nice to meet you. I have a hole in the hat, but it's still you know, you know, folks, if, if somebody doesn't look right and they walk up to you, you shouldn't be having this kind of a conversation. <laughs> Don't no, he, he on look, no he, he looks like he works. He has he has an instrument here. But I actually are prefer. you are you paid for this line of work? No, no, no. This is just this is just. I got ten minutes till the till the next freight train leaves town. I'll be jumping on it. Uh, what do you oh, that's why you wear the hat. That's the hat for jumping. It helps me jump better. Can I introduce Bob Gurr to the audience? This is Bob Gurr, who worked with Walt Disney. The funny thing is, I have a favorite Bob Gurr story. He drove, and get this, the nerve of the guy. Opening day of Disneyland, Bob Gurr drove his Cadillac into Disneyland, parked next to Autobia, opened up the trunk, and starts working on cars. The guy has no concept of Disney, the Disney look. We don't do that, Bob. I'm sorry to tell you about 60 years, five years too late. We don't drive our cars 
and park them next to Utopia, okay? You want to know why? Yeah, well, I mean, if you, if, oh, well, you're going to make why excuses now. What, what, yeah, why don't you ask me what my excuse was? What is your excuse for oh, right driving management. your car into Disneyland? Walt put in the Utopia ride and didn't hire any mechanics to fix it. <laughs> Well, everybody's true allowed. Story, true story. Everybody's allowed a few mistakes. I okay. had a yellow Cadillac. I had my own tools. I repaired the cars for two weeks. That was you? Wow. We had 37 cars on Monday. We had two on Friday. Two on Friday. So, so listen. The thing is, I always like to see people that I see in real life who actually were on the Disney TV show, and I think there were three episodes of Disneyland that were all about the upcoming grand opening of Disneyland. And in one of them, there's a guy, in uh, a grown man, driving a little go-kart. And I think it was you, was it not? A clip of you testing out an Autopia car? Dateline, Disneyland, or something did, like that? Did you hear his question? He said go-kart, and then he said Autopia. You know, I'm almost 88, and he's dingier than I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did, is it true that it was your Autopia design that inspired a young Elon Musk to create the Tesla car? Is that true? This is getting spookier by the minute. I'm this, making up my own rumors here. No, people that pay music, they have all their decades and all their historic areas all smoothed around in their brain because of the, the little funny fumes they ingest, and they don't know what year they're talking about. But I do know Elon Musk. I did meet him, yes. You did. Is it true that he and Joe Namath have, like, a, a je ne sais quoi? <laughs> Joe Namath and Elon Musk. And Bob Gurr, those three names, they they just go together, you know. Yeah, but you were speaking French. I didn't know what it was you said. What did he just say? Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> Je ne sais quoi. No, you know. I'm yes, a quack. I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll be. A, I'm a All quack. right. Like he said he's the so, quack. Okay, I got it. See, I got it out of him. So Bob likes to have a question. Does anybody have a question for Bob? Like, what was Walt Disney like? Or anybody got a question? I bet you did. What was, what? what was Wild Disney like? Oh, you got to go talk to Floyd Norman. Floyd Norman worked over there. Yeah. Hey, wait, uh, come on over. Come okay, on, great. Is that, is come on. Uh, this this man is so this man is so smart. This Floyd Norman. Uh, on a day like this, normally he and his lady are together. And I said, "Where's his lady?" And she's he's, she's staying home working. I said, "She is so much smarter than he is." Because she would not come out on a cold day like this. It's only us stupid old men that come out on a day like this. We're freezing. Hey, who are you calling on? Got, got an umbrella? <laughs> come on, come on. Come on. You got, got some questions for it. I, I, I have one. I my Mickey Mouse umbrella. Come on, you got, got All right. questions for it. Okay, okay, now listen. We have Bob Gurr here. Bob Gurr's claim to fame is all this incredible work he did at Disneyland. Floyd Norman's claim to fame is all the work he did on Walt's animation. So where do these two things cross? Well, guess what? Floyd happens to be able to tell you some great stories about the very, very beginning of Disneyland. So how about we start with that? What was your first trip to Disneyland? And did you, like me, think, why does Bob Gurr have his car next to Autopia? <laughs> what, what is Bob Gurr doing? Well, I wasn't there opening day because I didn't even work for the Disney Studios when Disneyland opened back in uh, July 1955. But I was at the park and uh, walking around, uh, having no idea that in a few months I would receive a phone call from the Disney Studios offering me a job. So there you go. But when I, you know, that first, that first day at Disneyland, I was just a regular guest like everybody else. I was not working for the company. But in a few months, I was. So there you, you go. Are you saying that you actually went on the very first day? No, not the first day. That was only for big shots and employees. No, but yeah. I, was, I was there the first week. Wow. Not the first day, but that was still early enough. You know why? Because the park was still pretty much empty. <laughs> did, it have, um, did it have any impact on whether or not you went and applied? You applied for a job at the studio, is that right? Well, I had applied for a job uh, right out of high school. At, so, at Disney? At Disney, oh, yeah. Wow. I drove down from Santa Barbara, not in an Autopia car, but in a regular car. 
But I, I drove down from Santa Barbara and applied for a job at Disney, and of course, naturally, they didn't hire me. But they gave me good advice. They said, go to school and learn something. Wow. And so, uh, you know, I went to school, and while I was in school, Disneyland opened. And so I went to Disneyland that first uh, opening week. And lo and behold, a few months later, I received a phone call from the Disney studio saying, do you still want that job? Did you ever see Walt? Did you ever see Walt at Disneyland? Oh, yeah. I saw Walt everywhere. Are you kidding? I saw him at Disneyland. I saw him at the studio. I saw him in the parking lot. You know, Walt was everywhere. You know that, Bob. Well, people always ask that question. They always come up to me and say, did you ever know Mr. Disney? And then we, we got a laugh and we says, no, Walt worked with everybody. Uh, and uh, people can't understand that. Because, you know, typically you think, oh, big corporation, everybody's an MBA, and they all have layers of management of all kinds, and then the, the chief executive officer, you never see them. No, Walt got out of his office every day, and he walked around that back lot to see what's going on. He walked all over Disneyland all the time. He, and in the course of your day, you, you just saw him everywhere all the time. He'd walk into your room. Uh, no warning, just uh, just show up, wandering. Sometimes he wouldn't say a word. Other times he'd see what you're doing on your wall, or your drafting board, or whatever. Uh, maybe ask a question. Uh, seldom told you about anything or told you to do anything. He'd look at something and says, "Say, have you ever thought about?" And he's always asking you to to think about something, not that he's telling you to do something. What about Is that? What you found? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever uh, seen a situation famously where he didn't want somebody to call him Mr. Disney? You ever see that happen where he said, "Call me Walt" or or "Don't don't call me Mr. Disney"? All the time. You saw it happen? Yeah. I in the mic on the mic. Here, here. I'm going to. Um. Well, you can hold it if you want. Okay. Oh no, that's um. That's a very interesting point. You go to uh, Disneyland, everybody has uh, an oval emblem. Does it say Mr. or Mrs. or anything? No, it never does. It says Walt. Um, the story always was, and everybody got it. They go to the studio the first time, you're walking down a hall, nobody around, and Walt's coming the other way. What are you going to do? You're, you're a new hire. You need to do two things. You either say hello or you don't say hello. And if you say hello, what are you going to do? You say, good morning, Mr. Disney. Two seconds later, he stops you and he says, what's your name? Well, I'm Walt. Don't ever forget it. And you do it like that. Or if you went right by him, too timid to say anything, he'd stop and he'd say, what's the matter? Aren't we talking? <laughs> And this would spread so fast around that new hires, we tried to don't let the new hires know this. <laughs> let, them get, let them get the full treatment. But no, this was, this was something that a very, Walt was insistent. Today, I still have people walk up to me and they says, hello, Mr. Gurr, and I have to snap at him really fast. I says, no, I'm Bob. And I have to do it that way because that's, that's the way it is. It's, it's, it's what we do. Do you do that all the time? Yes. Yeah, I can't call you Mr. Okay, no, that's the way it is. Well, is that, okay, so I have a question. Is that because he really, I don't have to hold this, I have one taped to my face. Is that because, it, you hold that, is that because he felt like he would get better results from his team, or is it possible that he, that he felt like it, it made him feel like his dad? That's my phone ringing. Did it have something to do with him not wanting to be referred to as people refer to his father? Or did he really feel like he was lifting up his team? There was a stupid PBS program on Walt Disney a couple of years ago yeah. in, which, in, which, in which there was famous historians, historians, would say, <laughs> well, Walt was thinking, explaining why Walt did something. You just did that again. Well, Walt was doing it this way, and well, what do you think Walt was doing it that way? Look, I looked him in the eye for 12 years. I have no idea what he was thinking, ever. And for somebody to 60 years later, 50 years later, say, well, Walt was thinking of, number one, historically, there's no way to ever know what Walt had in his mind. 
It's as simple as that, and when any time you have somebody explain to you what Walt was thinking, walk away. Well, I think it's a really good point, because I heard that Walt was thinking that when... I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm not gonna... No, but, but there are times... Well, let's say, for instance, Walt is famous for wanting to be called Walt, so I guess the question... I'm not going to infer that I know exactly what he was thinking, but did he ever out outline it? Did he ever say in a meeting, I want you to call me Walt because of such and such? You know, I think people believe that he, he did not want to be separated from his team by his title. So I think, that, I think that people assumed that being on a first name basis meant that he could really work with people on an equal footing. Yeah, it was pretty simple stuff. I mean, I, we don't want to overthink this why Walt wanted to be called Walt. It's just that, you know, it's the way we relate to each other. Uh, we don't call our friends Mr. Uh, we call them by their name. And Walt simply wanted to be called Walt because that was his name. And he called you by your name because we're all part of the same team. We're all part of the same family. We're all working together. So you really don't have to go into deep analysis about this. Walt called you by your first name and, and he wanted to be called by his first name because he just wanted a sincere relationship and uh, there's nothing better than that so when we worked with Walt yeah we didn't know what he was thinking but we didn't have to because yeah. deep down inside we all knew what he wanted you know when I worked on the Jungle Book I knew pretty much what Walt wanted I didn't know exactly what he was thinking but he wanted a darn good movie that much he wanted to make people laugh. He wanted to make people smile. So that much you knew. He wanted a Disney movie. Well, if you know what that is, then that's what you do. Yeah. So, pretty simple. Who has a good question for two Disney legends? Um, two. Well, I soon only, to be three. I, I only see one here. <laughs> I only see one legend. <laughs> you do? Yeah, the real legend and, and me, the fake one. <laughs> I, thought <you're, laughs> I thought you were making a joke. Hey, no. you're, you're a legend. No, I'm not. You're not a legend, okay? No, no, no. You're an animator. Uh, that's debatable. <laughs> you're a singer. Uh, uh, you're a singer. I'm a singer, yeah. You're going to sing Bare Necessities for everybody. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we now present Bob Gerr <laughs> and Floyd Norman. Bob singing. Gerr. Bob's going to sing the Bare Necessities? I don't remember the chorus. Look for the bare necessities, simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your strife. I mean the bare necessities. That's why I'm bare the rest of you with all the bare necessities. Wherever I wander, wherever I wander, wherever I roam, wherever I roam, I could be under in my little home. The bees are buzzing in the trees, they're making honey just for me. Can't remember the next line of, uh, of the lyrics. And I can't remember the chords. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there do you the remember. bare necessities of life will come to you. We'll come to you. Simple bare necessities Can't about your worries and your strife I mean the bare necessities Mother Nature's recipes That bring the bare necessities of life Just try and relax Try and relax Come on down to my place Cause let me tell you something little bridges You act like that behind Uh-uh, you're working too hard Yeah and don't try to freeze it. What the? What the? I forgot the word. Yeah, I forgot them too. Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Don't get about your worries and your strife. Yeah, man. To meet the bare necessities, what try a bare and rest it is. But just the bare necessities of life. Oh, yeah. Fly, Norman. Uh, Fly, Norman. Uh, <laughs> Floyd Norman, the modest legend. Yeah, the one we, that was, uh, you know, Bill Harris uh, blew the bear. And you know that 
using Phil Harris was Walt Disney's idea. And that wasn't us, that was strictly Walt. Walt heard Phil Harris at a party, and he recognized when he heard the voice of Phil Harris, he said, that's Baloo the Bear. Wow. And uh, the rest is history. So there you go. You know, he was a, he was a work associate or, or on the show with Bing Crosby, is that right? He, did he work on his show or? Jack Benny. Jack Benny. Oh, Phil Harris worked on Jack Benny? Jack Benny's show, yeah. Did you, uh, did you ever see the Jack Benny and Walt Disney sketch? Oh, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Uh, if you haven't seen Jack Benny with Walt Disney, it's hilarious. Evidently, it's not really Walt Disney's office, right? No, it's a movie set, but uh, Walt Disney is a pretty good actor, you know, and that bit he did with uh, Walt and Jack, yeah, uh, Jack Benny wanting free Disneyland tickets, very hilarious stuff, you know. So funny. <laughs> There's a rumor that while Walt was at the fake office, at the Jack Benny studio, pretending to be in Walt's office. There's a rumor that Floyd Norman was at the Burbank Studios in Walt's office with his feet up on the desk, eating chili. I don't know. I'm not no, saying. No, no, no. I'm Bra not brand saying muffins. <laughs> brand, I ate Walt Disney's brand muffins. Oh. True story. Yeah. Did uh, you? All true. Yeah. Was he there? No. Of course he wasn't there. <laughs> in the office. Well, I. I I was able to get Walt's brand muffins from his office, but I didn't eat them in wow. his office. Wow. And uh, that office has a little kitchenette, which is ideal for cooking chili. It also has uh, multiple rooms, which I don't, a lot of people don't know this about Walt Disney. He had a nice office, and then he had like a, a grubby office. Now, I can't say I know what he was thinking. But I, but I would like to propose that Walt Disney had the nice office with the awards and he would wear the tie, but then when it came time to get to work, he'd loosen up the tie, go get some chili, and then his desk was like a mess of scripts and all kinds of things, right? That's correct. I think what Walt Disney was trying to say was, no, look, there's Bob, there's Bob looking at me, he's doing it again. Don't try to tell people what Walt was thinking. That's great. So uh, you got Walt's autograph, right? Yes, I did. And uh, and the only way to get Walt's autograph and to know for sure it was Walt Disney's signature was to go to Walt Disney himself. Otherwise, somebody else might sign his name and you would have a fake Walt Disney signature. Well, I didn't want a fake. So the only way to get a real autograph was to go to Walt Disney himself and have him sign sign his name. So it took a lot of courage. Yeah, because I was I was afraid, but I did it, and he signed he signed my book, and I still have that autograph today. You still want it? I'll have it. I still want it. No, uh, it's, it's mine. It's mine. I thought maybe. <laughs> yeah, another great way to know for everybody that's out there. Another Run great Walt way to know that if your autograph from Walt Disney is authentic, one way to tell is that if it says Betty or Tony or something like that, that's not an authentic Walt Disney autograph. Like if it said Phil or Bing, it might be an autograph of another celebrity, but it's not Walt Disney's autograph unless it says Walt. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Red Law Paycheck. Huh? Red Law Paycheck. Red Law Paycheck. What's that? Walt's owned Red Law, Red Law. So which he would was sign the, the, rail, uh, the railroad, the uh, Mark Twain, and the... Uh, uh, Columbia? No. Later. Tiggy Room. Monorail. Monorail. And you worked for Walt. If you worked for Walt on the attractions, Monorail or the, or the steam train... That was his signature on a paycheck. Wow. A lot of times when people buy Walt Disney autographs, they happen to be canceled checks. And it's interesting, you know, you, you get like a check, you know, $25 for tickets to to the Luchador wrestling show signed Walt Disney. And you're like, I didn't know Walt Disney liked Luchadors. But, <laughs> but, but, but I've seen a lot of Walt Disney autographs for sale that happen to be canceled checks. You can get a little insight into, you know, his favorite restaurant or sport. Floyd, what's, what's, uh, what, what now? What's your next big film? What now? What are you working on now? I'm working on um, 
Wait a minute, I can't tell you that. Secret? <laughs> it's a secret, so you know it's going to be good. It's like Mickey Mouse was, was designed in secret. Yeah. Nobody was allowed to know, so it's going to be big. We're working on some really uh, interesting things, you know, up at uh, Pixar. Are and you working at Pixar? No, I don't work there. I just sort of hang out there. There's a word for that. Floiter. Floitering. Floitering or floitering. <laughs> yeah. He's a floiterer. Yeah, well, you know. Floyd Norman, he puts the Floyd back in floitering. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. no, it's been fun. Floyd and uh, and who, who writes our material? Because we're going to have to get better writers. No, don't be that <laughs> modest. You can be humble, but not that humble. Okay. You're, you write because you wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad we did another rendition of The Bare Necessities, but I'm going to have to go get uh, Terry Gilkinson's lead sheets yeah. and, and find out what those lyrics are, because well, we, we can't remember them. No, we do it every true. time, we can never remember right. Terry's lyrics. But, but you need to understand is that, that I sang that song at Disneyland for years. Without knowing the lyrics? No. No, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been a long time. But the thing is, in the song, yeah. there are two verses where he says, Now, step, you know, um, uh, when, I, when I pick a raw paw or a prickly pear, and I pick a raw paw, next time, beware. Yeah. Well, there's two of those verses. Yeah. And then at the end of the song, you have Baloo with Mowgli, like, sitting on his belly, floating down the river, and he basically recites what essentially is another verse, but it's yeah. all spoken. Yeah. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but when I sang that song at Disneyland, I took those lyrics and put them into the song because nobody ever gets to hear those lyrics performed live. Yeah. And so I sang, I sang, uh, come on over and just try and relax. Because let me tell you something, little Richards, if you act like that beehive, you're working too hard. You're working too hard. I thought that that section was the most zen of the whole song, so I put it in there with your permission. Thank you. Did you know that one of our monkeys, well, pretty much all the monkeys, was the popular entertainer, Scatman Crothers? Did you know that? Uh, no. Yeah. Of, of yeah. where? Of where? At the, at, in the Jungle Book, uh, Scatman did, did the monkeys. Remember the, 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 yeah, the monkeys that grabbed yeah. Mowgli? Off of, uh, off, off of, and they take him to King Louis. Yeah. Wait a minute. Well, I'm the king of the swingers. Oh, the jungle VIP. Well, I've reached, reached the top and then I had to stop. That's what's bugging me. Well, I want to be a man, Manco, and walk right into town. Sherman Brothers. I want to be like the other men. I'm tired of monkeying around, so. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I want to be like you. I want to walk like you, key. talk like you do too. And you oh, ask me it's true. That an ape like me is. <laughs> want to be. See, I can't remember the lyrics. I can't now, remember don't the lyrics. try to kid me, man, cause don't get in a deal. When I desire a man for a so I can be like you. Uh, give me the secret, man, cause clue me what to do. Give me, I just think that word like that. <laughs> My dreams got true. Well, do be do. I want to walk like you. I want to walk like you, talk like you. You know it's true. Scooby Doo 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 and Louis Prima, we couldn't get Louis Prima on the same day that Phil Harris was there. So Louis Prima recorded his stuff separate from uh, Phil Harris. And we put them together later. Really? So they were never in the studio at the same time. Movie magic. Movie magic. There you go. <laughs> and that little, the little guy, the little monkey, you know, sort of annoying. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see yeah. it's true, yeah, yeah, and it's like me. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I have a secret a story that my mom and dad lived in Anaheim in 1964, and they told me something that I found really peculiar. They said that 
They used to go to a, a bar or a night, you know, a restaurant bar in Anaheim yeah. and watch Scatman Crothers perform live. And I was thinking, yeah. why did Scatman Crothers perform in Anaheim? Did you know, is that, does that seem a little bit out of the ordinary that there would be a club in Anaheim that Scatman Crothers would play at? No, that's, that sounds that's perfectly reasonable because <laughs> he performed all over the, you know, the L.A. area. Oh, so wow. it doesn't sound, you know, and, and of course Scatman was at the studio doing all kinds of voices for us. So, but yeah, he was the monkeys in the Jungle Book. Wow. But uh, I don't even think he got a screen credit for that. What? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Learn to be just like you and me. Boy, the modest legend, ladies and gentlemen. You know it inside and out. Hey, that was fun. A first. That was 1966. That was a long time ago. You know how old I was? How old were you? Born <laughs> yet. I was two. I was two. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a good movie. Seems like only yesterday. You know, yeah, yeah. that's what I was thinking. You know? <laughs> and, that, and that song is just as funny today as it was back then. So Terry Gilkison wrote, yeah. wrote Baloo's song. Uh, he wrote The Bare Necessities. He wrote The Bare Necessities. And I sang The Scarecrow of Romney Marsh right out the gate earlier today. That was a Terry Gilkinson song. And his son, Tony Gilkinson, is a really well-respected guitar-playing musician in L.A. So Very good. I played on the bill with Tony Gilkinson, and then I said, I love your dad's music. And we spoke about Tony, about Terry for yeah. a while. Yeah. And um, he told me something interesting that I shared with you once. Yeah. He said that this song, the, the theme song to the Scarecrow of Romney Marsh, he told me that it was recorded the day that Kennedy got shot in Dallas. Really? He said, my dad was, my dad was in the studio recording the theme song to the Scarecrow of Romney Marsh that wow. day. Now, yeah. was that at the Disney studio? I don't know where yeah. they were doing that. And my, I, I assume it, pro they it probably was. It was probably, yeah. probably at the studio. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, Terry oh, gave us a great song, and uh, sadly, out. it's the only song of Terry's in the Jungle Book. Yeah. Uh, it's a really great song. Of course, the other songs are terrific too, written by Robert and Richard Sherman. Did but, you ever uh, get to hear any other uh, Terry Gilkinson uh, Jungle Book songs? No, I did not. Sadly, the only Gilkinson song that I remember hearing was Bare Necessities. But uh, no, I didn't hear the others. By the time I came onto the film, we were working with uh, Robert and Richard Sherman. Yeah. So it was a whole new score. So. Speaking of Robert and, and, and Richard Sherman, there is a song that I haven't sung yet. That was a request by, um, I think it was a request of Jeff Curdy, who was going to be at the barn, and I said, I'm going to be at the barn. I go, what song would you think would accompany the new book, Walt's Travels, or Travels with Walt? And he picked a song out that, that the Sherman Brothers wrote. Can you believe that this songbook is getting soaked in water? The, the soap songbook. D, tell me if you know this tune. Lovely songs for a rainy day. Ever heard this one? Flutterin'. No. It's, no. it's from it's from the happiest millionaire I believe oh. happiest millionaire or or um, yeah it's the happiest millionaire yeah. I think Fred McMurray another no it's not the happiest millionaire no not the happy what movie is this wizard it's um Gilly and Nancy Gilly and Nancy from what movie it's not the parent trap it's it's no, a no, the anyways are you ready to hear Come on, look it up, Matthew. <laughs> Would you like to hear it? I'd like to hear it, sure. Tell me, this is a Richard Sherman, uh, Robert Sherman song that not a lot of people know. Ready? I learned it for uh, for book signing. Thanks, Floyd. Let's hear it for Floyd Norman. <laughs> the Modest Legend. Floyd, the Modest Legend, Norman. All right. It's time for flitterin', dustin' off the trip and flitterin' far where the grass is greener. Now and then comes the time again for flitterin'. We'll soon be packing up, stacking up our dreams and brick a back for some new destination. Don't know where, but we're going there. We're flitterin' again. New places, new faces. New friendships will start 
While old places, old faces Stay dear to our heart as we go flittering Following a rainbow glittering bright Over the horizon, maybe then And maybe there, we'll settle down And never care for flittering Time for flittering. <laughs> flittering from, I'm supposed to know the name of that movie. Matthew, what's the name of that movie? Summer Magic. Summer Magic. Summer Magic. Yeah. yeah. Good. Hey, Hayley Mills. Hayley Mills. Yeah. Gilly and Nancy. Oh, well, Hayley Mills, she was also with her. All right. I have covered the entire book today. Train songs, insane songs, fame songs and even songs about people who I have never, ever met. You, sir, in the front row. Have we ever met before? Have we ever spoken before? Okay, pick a card. Pick any card. That's what magicians, magicians sometimes when they get a trick, they say to the audience, <laughs> and they say no. Better? What? Did we speak before? And they say no, and then the audience will know that Disney they're not uh -huh. tricking them. Find out everything you want to know. Okay, okay. 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 so now, what's your now name? Now will you pretend to shoot me with it? Okay. Luke, okay. Hey, hey, look, look at Luke. Thank you. Lucky Luke, this town. Look, 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 I, can, I see Lucky Luke. Oh, look at Lucky Luke, he's right there. Here's the Lucky Luke, he's in town. Lucky Luke, Lucky Luke. I'm glad that you came by, Lucky Luke. Lucky Luke. Lucky Luke. No, I don't know what you want me to tell you. I need an order and a juke. Play a little song for Luke. Luke, Luke, Luke. That's a good one. I'm glad that you're here. Getting ready to go in the barn. See a couple Walt Disney chains. Lucky Luke. Lucky Luke. Lucky Luke. Lucky Luke. Do they call you Lucky Luke? Luke, 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 Luke. You got a sticker right there on front of your shirt. It's the coolest sticker that I will prefer. Uh, lucky Luke, Lucky Luke, Lucky Luke. Going inside the barn in red. It's the coolest barn I ever saw, that's what I said. It's Walt Disney's barn, he had it in his backyard. It's made out of wood and it's kind of hard. Don't try to bang your head against the wall, because it's made out of wood. Not good. Lucky Luke. Let me guess. Your name, name for Skywalker. must be Lenny. I thought a lot of times Skywalker? people they name Skywalker. Your name initial. Walker. Did you name Larry? Oh, Rocker. Larry. 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 Are you Larry? <laughs> Laura. Uh, Lammy? <laughs> you telling me they didn't give you any name at all? Like, they didn't give you a name? You did get one. Okay. Yeah. You're Larry. Okay. Are you so, tried that one? What are you doing Monday? Not Larry. Uh, what are you doing what's Monday? What's your name? Night? Nothing. Ash. You want to go to Morocco? Oh, no, I'm not, not, not too Ash. shy to ask okay. a guy okay. named Ash. I would ask uh, if Ash's uh, name uh, was Ash. Well, I go to school. school. That's another thing that I do. Okay, so I so asked Ash. I decided to ask Ash if he had a name. And Ash said if I asked his name, he'd say his name was Ash. Ash, it's nice to meet you. This is Luke, but you know that because yeah, Luke is your brother. He's the other okay, Ash. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm you are I'm Ash, and he is not. But guess what? He has got oh, a like, sticker oh, right there on his shirt. It's so really cool. Oh, you got one too. You, you got a sticker too. I, don't want to send I asked yeah. Ash if I could ask. Yeah. Ask Ash his name, and he said Ash. Ash, this is Floyd. Floyd, this is Ash. Did you know that Floyd made some of the animated Did films that Walt Disney put out? Go ahead, Ash. Probably, probably over 100. And when you get there, you get a he chance. made. Did you make 101 Dalmatians? Scarecrow, Scarecrow, the soldiers of the king. On the southern coast of England, there's a legend people tell Of days long ago when the great scarecrow would ride from the jaws of hell And he'd laugh <laughs> with a fiendish yell With his clothes all torn and tattered, to the dark of night he'd ride Like a demon ghost from the marsh to the coast he'd rob the rich men hide And he'd laugh <laughs> till he'd split his side Scarecrow, scarecrow The soldiers of the king fear his name Scarecrow, scarecrow, the 
country folk all love him just the same. Scarecrow. He would always help the farmer when there was no gold to bring. He'd find a way for the poor to pay the taxes of the king. Scarecrow, every man would sing. So the king told all his soldiers, hang up high or hang up low. But never return to the day I learn he rides the flames below. Or you'll hang with a great scarecrow. Scarecrow, scarecrow. The soldiers of the king feared his name. Scarecrow, scarecrow. The country folk all loved him just the same. That one hurts. Oh boy. 11 to 3 every month. We're getting ready. We're getting ready to pack up for another month. It's almost time to say goodbye to all our company. Not quite yet, though. Not quite yet. This is just too good not to play twice. This one is good. Got a sweetie down in the chicken house By the fat north when he sees the horses When he sees my little mini mouse When it's feeding time for the animal And they howl and growl like a cannibal I just turn my hill to the hen house still And you hear me singing this song Oh, the old tomcat with a meow, meow, meow The old hound dog with a wow, 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 wow The crow's tail and a meal, meow Gosh, what a racket like an old bus. Uh, I have listened to the dick and dick and doo -doo. I have heard the rooster talk a doodle doo doo. Oh, the cows and the chickens, they all sound like the dickens when I hear my little minis. <laughs> That's a doozy. Ready? I'm the guy they call little Mickey Mouse. Got a sweetie down in the chicken house. Now the fat nose skinny sees my little mini sees my little old mini mouse. When it's feed it's time for the animal. And the howl and growl like the cannibals. I just turn my heels to the hen house still and you hear me singing this song. Oh the old tomcat with the meow meow meow. The old hen don't raise the bow. Oh wow wow. And the old hen don't raise the bow. Oh wow wow. And the old hen don't raise the bow. Oh wow wow. And the old hen don't raise the bow. Oh wow wow. And the old hen don't raise the bow. Oh wow wow. And the old hen don't raise the bow. Oh wow wow. And the old hen don't raise the bow. Oh wow wow. And the old hen don't raise the bow. Or as, or as uh, Oliver Hardy would say, <laughs> that is a doozy, that one. <sighs> well, it hasn't warmed up much today, so I, I should sing a song about a fire. Isn't there a Disney song about a fire? <clears throat> Something warm? Oh. Bambi. There's a whole end of the show, Bambi. Born on a mountaintop of Tennessee, the greatest state in the land of the free. Raised in the woods, so he do every tree, and he caught him a bear when he was only three. Davy, Davy Crockett, king of the wild frontier. He's marching along, spinning a yarn and singing a song. He's a chief for fight and righting the wrong. He's ringy as a bar and he's twice as strong. Davy, Davy Crockett, the king of the wild frontier. <laughs> his land is biggest and his land is best. From the grassy hills to the mountains.
Francisco. He's ahead of us all.